Hello all and welcome to tonight's tour portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and, com and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Eloheinu, speak the words of your Torah in our mouths and the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. <coughs> Excuse me. Blessed are you, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, give her the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to land you. May be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is the first part of Teruma, Exodus 25, 1 through 27, 19. Yahweh said to Moses, Speak to the people of Israel that they may take for me a contribution. From every man whose heart moves him, you shall receive a contribution for me. And this contribution that you shall receive from them gold, silver, and bronze, blue and purple and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linens, goat hair, tanned rams, skins, goats, Acacia wood, oil for the lamp, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrance incense, on onyx stones, and stones for setting, for the ephod, and for the breastpiece. Let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell in their midst, exactly as I show you concerning the pattern of the tabernacle, and of all its furniture, so that you shall make it. Whoops. Uh, they shall make an ark of acacia wood, two cubits and a half shall be its length, and a cubit and a half its breadth, and a cubit and, its a cubit and a half its height. And you shall overlay it with pure gold, inside and outside you shall overlay it, and you shall make on it a molding of gold around it. And you shall cast four rings of gold <coughs> for it, and put them on its four feet, four rings on the one side of it and two rings on the other side of it. You shall make pieces of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. And you shall put the poles into the rings on the ark. They shall not be taken from it. And you shall put into the ark the testimony that I shall give you. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be its length and a cubit and a half its breadth. And you shall make two cherubim of gold. One of hammered work you shall make them. On the two ends of the mercy seat, make one cherub on one end and one cherub on the other. Of one piece with the mercy seat you shall make the cherubim on its two ends. The cherubim shall spread their wings out above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings, their face, their faces one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubim be and you shall put the mercy seat on the top of the ark. And in the ark you shall put the testimony that I shall give you. There I will meet with you. And from above my mercy seat, from between the two cherubim that are on the ark of the testimony, I will speak with you about all that I will give you in commandment for the people of Israel. You shall make a table of acacia wood. Two cubits shall be its length, a cubit its breadth, and a cubit and a half its height. You shall overlay it with pure gold, and make a molding of gold around it, and you shall make a rim around its headbreadth, wide and molding of gold around the rim, and you shall make it four rings of gold, and fasten the rings to the four corner at its four legs. Close to the front close to the frame the rings shall lie. As holders for the poles to carry the table, you shall make the poles of acacia wood. And overlay them with gold, and the table shall be carried with these. And you shall make its plates and dishes for incense, and its flagons and bowls with which to pour drink offerings. You shall make them of pure gold. And you shall set the bread of the presence on a table before me regularly. You shall make a, la a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand shall be made of hammered work, its base, its stem, its cups, its calyxes, and its flowers shall be of one piece with it. 
And there shall be six branches going out of its sides, three branches of the lampstand out of one side of it, and three branches of the lampstand out the other side of it. Three cups made like almond blossoms, each with a calyx and flower. On the other branch, so <coughs> for the six branches going out of the lampstand, and on the lampstand itself there shall be four cups made like almond blossoms with their calyxes and flowers, and a calyx of one piece with it under each pair of the six branches going out from the lampstand. Their calyxes and their branches shall be of one piece with it, the whole of it a single piece of hammered work of pure gold. You shall make seven lamps for it, and the lamp shall be set up so as to give light on the, on the space in front of it. Its tongs and her trays shall be of pure gold. It shall be made with all of these utensils out of a talent of pure gold. And see that you make them after the pattern for them, which is being shown you on the mountain. Moreover, you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet yarns. You shall make them with cherubim skillfully worked into them. The length of each curtain shall be twenty-eight cubits, and the breadth of each curtain four cubits. All the curtains shall be the same size, five cubits, oops, five curtains shall be coupled to one another, and the other five curtains shall be coupled to one another. And you shall make loops of blue on the edge of the outermost curtain on the first set. Likewise, you shall make loops on the edge of the outermost curtain on the second set. Fifty loops you shall make on the one curtain, and fifty loops you shall make on the other curtain, that is, the second set. The loops shall be opposite one another, and you shall make fifty clasps of gold. And couple the curtains one to another with the clasps, so that the tabernacle may be a single whole. You shall also make curtains of goat hair for a tent over the tabernacle. Eleven curtains you shall make. The length of each curtain shall be thirty cubits, and the breadth of each curtain shall be four cubits. The eleven curtains shall be the same size. You shall couple five curtains by themselves, six curtains by themselves, and six curtains you shall double over at the front of the tent. You shall make fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in one set, and fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in the second set. You shall make fifty clasps of bronze, and put the clasps into the loops, and couple the tent together, that it may be a single whole, and a part that remains of the curtains of the tent. The half curtain that remains shall be hung over the back of the tabernacle, and the extra that remains in the length of the curtains, the cubit on the one side and the cubit on the other side, shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side and that side to cover it. And you shall make for the tent a covering of tanned ram skins and a covering of goat skins on top. You shall make upright frames for the tabernacle of acacia wood. Ten cubits shall be the length of a frame, and a cubit and a half the breadth of each frame. There shall be ten, there shall be two tenons in each frame for fitting together, so that you do for all the frames of the tabernacle. So shall you do for all the frames of the tabernacle. You shall make the frames for the tabernacle twenty frames for the south side. Forty bases of silver you shall make under the twenty frames. Two bases under one frame for its two tenons, and two bases under the next frame for its two tenons, and for the second side of the tabernacle and the north side, twenty frames. And there are forty bases of silver. Two bases under one frame, and two bases under the next frame. And for the rear of the tabernacle westward you shall make six frames. And you shall make two frames for corners of the tabernacle in the rear. They shall be separate, beneath, but joined at the top, at the first ring. Thus shall it be with both of them. They shall form the two corners. And there shall be eight frames from their base of silver, sixteen bases, two under one frame and two bases under another frame. You shall make bars of acacia, five for the frames of the one side of the tabernacle, and five for the frames of the other side of the tabernacle, and five for the frames 
of the side of the tabernacle at the rear westward. The middle bar halfway up frames you shall run from end to end. You shall overlay the frames with gold and make their rings of gold for holders for the bars. And you shall overlay the bars with gold. And you shall erect the tabernacle according to the plan for it that you were shown on the mountain. You shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen, and it shall be made with cherubim skillfully worked in. And you shall hang it on four pillars of acacia overlaid with gold, with hooks of gold, on four bases of silver. And you shall hang the veil from the clasps and bring the ark of the testimony in there within the veil. And the veil shall separate you from the holy place Separate for you the holy place from the most holy. You shall put this mercy seat on the ark of the testimony in the ho most holy place. And you shall set the table outside the veil, and the lampstand on the south side of the tabernacle opposite the table. And you shall put the table on the north side. You shall make a screen for the entrance of the tent of blue, purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twine linen embroidered with needlework. And you shall make for the screen five pillars of acacia, and overlay them with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold. And you shall cast five beams, you shall cast five vases of bronze for them. You shall make the altar of acacia wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be square, and its height shall be three cubits. And you shall make horns for it on its four corners. Its horns shall be of one piece with it. And you shall overlay it with bronze, and you shall make pots for it to receive its ashes, and shovels, and basins, and forks, and fire pans, and you shall make all of its utensils of bronze, and you shall also make for it a grating of a grating, a network of bronze, and on a net you shall make four bronze rings at its four corners, and you shall set it under the edge of the altar, so that the next extends halfway down the altar. And you shall make poles for the altar, poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with bronze. And the poles shall be put through the rings that the poles are on the two sides of the altar when it is carried. You shall make it hollow with boards, as it has been shown to you on the mountain, so shall it be made. You shall make the cord of the tabernacles on the south side of the cord shall be hangings of fine twined linen in a hundred cubits long for one side. Its twenty pillars and their twenty bases shall be of bronze, but the hooks of the pillars and their fillets should be silver. And likewise for its length on the north side there shall be hangings in a hundred cubits long. Its pillars twenty and their bases twenty of bronze, but the hooks of the pillars and their fillets shall be of silver. And for the breadth of the court on the west side, there shall be hangings for fifty cubits, with ten pillars and ten bases. The breadth of the court on the front to the east shall be fifty cubits. The hangings for the one side of the gate shall be fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and three bases. On the other side of the hangings shall be fifteen cubits, and their three pillars and bases. For the gate of the court shall be a screen twenty cubits long of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen embroidered with needlework. It shall have five pillars with them four bases. Oh no, it, should, it shall have four pillars and with them four bases. All the pillars around the court shall be fill, filleted with silver. Their hooks shall be of silver. Their bases of bronze. The length of the court shall be a hundred cubits, and its breadth fifty, and the height five, cu five cubits, with hanging of fine twined linen and bases of bronze. All the utensils of the tabernacle for every use, all its pegs and all the pegs of the court shall be done of bronze. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohinu, King of the Universe, who gave the Torah of truth and said everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata Adonai Elohinu, Melakalom, Ashenatalinu, Tereni Mevaisheinu, Alom Natab.
Beta can you brook a tar don't I need Tina to rock? Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say our blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to gross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, you King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. <coughs> Excuse me. Today's read is 1 Kings 5, 12 through 6, 13. And Yahweh gave Solomon wisdom, and he promised him, and there was peace between Hiram and Solomon. And the two of them made a treaty. King Solomon drafted forced labor out of all Israel. And the draft numbered 30,000 men. And he sent them to Lebanon. Ten thousand a month in shifts. They would be a month in Lebanon and two months at home. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh. Adoniram was in charge of draft. Solomon also had 70,000 burden bearers and 80,000 stone cutters in the hill country, besides Solomon's 3,000 chief officers who were over the work, who had charge of the people who carried on the work. At the king's command, they quarried out great, costly stones in order to lay the foundation of the house with dressed stones. So Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders and all the men of Gubul did the cutting and prepared the timber and the stone to build the house. <clears throat> in the 480th year after the people of Israel came out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv, which is the second month, he began to build the house of Yahweh. The house that King Solomon built for Yahweh was 60 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. The vestibule in front of the nave of the house was 20 cubits long, equal to the width of the house, and 10 cubits deep <coughs> in front of the house. And he made for the house windows with recessed frames. He also built a structure against the wall of the house, running around the walls of the house, both the nave and the inner sanctuary. And he made side chambers all around. The lowest story was 5 cubits broad, and the middle one was 6 cubits broad, and the third was 7 cubits broad. <coughs> For around the outside of the house, he made offsets in the wall in order that the supporting beams should not be inserted into the walls of the house. When the house was built, it was with stone prepared at the quarry, so that neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron was heard in the house while it was being built. The entrance for the lowest story was on the south side of the house, and one went up by stairs to the middle story, and from the middle story to the third. So he built the house and finished it, and he made the ceiling of the house of beams and planks of cedar. He built the structure against the whole house, five cubits high, and it was joined to the house with timbers of cedar. <clears throat> now the word of Yahweh came to Solomon concerning this house that you are building. If you will walk in my statutes and obey my rules and keep my commandments and walk in them, then I will establish my word with you when I spoke to David your father. And I'll dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. Blessed art thou, Don Elohim, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Don I give her the Torah. Brukata Don Elohim, Malak Alom, Ashur Natalanu, Tori, Met Vaishi Elom, Natabet, Kinu, Brukata Don I, Nitina Torah. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, King of the Universe, who chose us from... Uh, 
Sorry. Who are sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you sing the words of your Torah in their mouths, and in the mouths of all your people, Israel, may we, and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, you king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai. Give her the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence and light you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Two days read is Jeremiah 33, 25 to 26, and Matthew 12, 46 through 13, 58. Thus says Yahweh, if I have not established my covenant with day and night in the fixed order of heaven and earth, then I will reject the offspring of Jacob and David my servant, and will not choose one of his offspring to rule over the offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will restore their fortunes and will have mercy on them. While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside asking to speak with him. But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother, and who are you, my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. That same day Yeshua went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great clouds, and great crowds gathered about him. So that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell among the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprung up, and since they did, they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no roots, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, and some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Then the disciples came to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. For to, for to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, you will indeed hear, but never understand, and you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should be, oops, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I will heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous people have longed to see what you see. And did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what is sown along the path. As for what is sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while and when tribulation and persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness and riches choke the word, and it provokes un oops, it proves unfruitful. As for what is sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold. And another sixty, and another thirty. He puts another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man so, who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to them, said to him, 
Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said no, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let's both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like grain of the mustard seed, that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds. But when it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, that a woman took and hid in, tree, in three measures of flour, till it was all leaven. All these things Yeshua said to the crowds in parables, indeed he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the, into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age. And the reapers are angels. Just as weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and lawbreakers. And throw them into the fiery furnace. In a place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who hears, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, when a man found, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like the net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, the men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? I said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. And when Yeshua had finished these parables, he went away from them and came to his hometown. He taught them in their synagogues so that they were astonished and said where did this man get this wisdom and his mighty works it is is not this the carpenter's son it's not his mother called mary and are not his brothers james and joseph and simon and judas and are not all his sisters with us where then did this man get all these things and they took offense at him but yeshua said to them a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do mighty works there because of their unbelief. Blessed art thou, Adonai, Elihini, King of the universe, who gave the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, give the Torah. Bukata, Adonai, Elihini, Malakalo, Mashanatalanu, Tere, Meveshiye, Alom, Natabete, Kinyu, Bukata, Adonai, Natina, Tara. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say your blessing. Blessed art thou, Donai Elohim, you king of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel, maybe, and our offspring, the offspring of your people.
the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, Elihim, you king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence here and you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Hebrews 8.1. This is the first read. Now the point in what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the mag majesty in heaven, a minister to the holy places in the true tent. Sorry. That the Lord set up, not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices, thus it is necessary. For this priest also to have something to offer. Now, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. They serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly things. For when Moses was about to erect a tent, he was instructed by Elohim, saying, See that you make everything according to the pattern that is shown you on the mountain. But as, but as it is, Hamashiach has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent then the old, as the covenant he mediates, is better, since it is enacted on better promises. Hebrews 9.23-24 Thus it was necessary for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these rites, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these, for Hamashiach has entered, not into a holy place made with the hands, which are copies of true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of Elohim on our behalf. Hebrew 10.1 For since the law was but a shadow of the good things to come, instead of the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. Since this is the last video, I have one question. How are all these related? Thank you for watching.